Today, I want to introduce the general process used by an engineer to solve a practical problem in our everyday life. Let's suppose we live in an era there is no people drinking coffee. You are the first smart guy who finds the, the flavor of the coffee bean is so amazing. You want to extract the flavor from the coffee bean. Most specifically, you want to brew a perfect cup of coffee. This problem is obviously valid. A lot of people like coffee these days. The history of drinking tea is much longer. So maybe we can learn a lot from how people prepare tea. First, they cut the leaves into small particles. They use hot water to steep it. Maybe we can use the same method to extract the flavor from coffee bean. The first problem we are facing is where to get the coffee bean. We may purchase it from a farmer or we can plant our own coffee tree. In order to evaluate which method is better, we need to use the decision matrix. Planting our own coffee tree is more complex and uh, need to use a lot of time compared with purchasing coffee bean from a farmer. So our solution is we purchase coffee bean from the farmer. We use the, the grinder to grind the coffee bean into small particles. Then we use hot water to steep it. Now it's time to build our first prototype. We first set up a campfire on the ground. We grind the coffee bean into small particles. We put it in a pot. We add some water. We put the pot on top of the campfire. When the water reaching to its boiling point, we remove it. We let the coffee grains drop off. Then we pour in off our first cup of coffee. Now it's time to evaluate the solution. The coffee tastes amazing, but uh, maybe just a little bit better. Can we add some ingredients into it to make it taste better? From cowboy coffee to Turkish coffee, the problem is still how to brew a perfect cup of coffee. The general concept is the same, still using hot water to steep coffee grounds. But there is two differences. The first one is using a coffee mug to measure water, using a measuring spoon to measure coffee. In this way, we can fix the ratio between water and the coffee grounds. That means we can make the flavor of, of our coffee consistent. The second difference is we add sugar into the coffee. Other steps to prepare the coffee are the same. We wait until the water reaching to its boiling point. We let the coffee grains drop off. Then we pour in off the top. We get a perfect cup of traditional Turkish coffee. Now it's time to enjoy. It tastes better because of the sugar. But you start to notice there are some small grounds in your coffee. You want to remove it from your coffee. To solve this problem, people start to generate some new concept. Can we figure out a, a method to hold the coffee grounds at the bottom of the coffee pot? Some genius engineer designed mesh piston. They only add one mesh piston on top of a coffee pot. After brewing your coffee, just slowly push the mesh piston down to the bottom of the coffee pot. The mesh piston will hold the coffee grounds at the bottom of the coffee pot. Now you can safely pour in off your coffee without need to worry about pouring off the grounds. This time you may notice the coffee grounds is still contact with your coffee. As some coffee experts said, long time steep your coffee may spoil the flavor. Can we figure out a method to separate the coffee grounds with your coffee? Now it's time for a percolator. The new concept for a percolator is to separate the coffee grounds with the coffee. 
To solve the problem, engineer add a mesh basket in on top of the percolator. Put coffee grounds on the mesh basket, and also add a vertical tube inside of the percolator. When heating the percolator, the the temperature will start to rise. The rising temperature means rising pressure inside of the percolator. The pressure will push the water upwards through the tube. But uh, because the percolator is not uh, perfectly sealed, the temperature inside the percolator can only rise a little bit. Then the water will be pulled back by gravity while running through the ground coffee. The flavor of the coffee will be extracted in this way, without uh, steeping into the water. Inspired by the idea of a percolator, engineers designed the electric uh, drip coffee maker, which we use a lot in our everyday life nowadays. Let's take a look at our good friend coffee maker. What is the new concept for electric uh, drip coffee maker? It's the temperature. The coffee expert found the perfect temperature to brew the coffee is 200 Fahrenheit. It's not the 212. Engineer needs to figure out a method to control the temperature around 200 Fahrenheit. As we all know, it's easier to control electricity than to control the fire. So they use electricity to preheat the water. They add a sensor to detect the, temp the temperature of the wa water. Usually it's a temperature sensitive resistor. By applying some closed loop control method, the temperature can be controlled to 200 Fahrenheit. Other things are basically the same as a percolator. They still use a shower head to shower the coffee grounds in a basket, use a coffee pot or a mug to collect coffee. I personally do not recommend a single serve K cup machine just because the K cup is made up of plastic, which is not uh, environment friendly. Looks like the coffee maker is a perfect machine. We do not need to make any change to make it better. But uh, there is no perfect machine in an engineer's eye. The new concept for an espresso machine is pressure. You may have this experience when you're washing your car. The pressure of the water will help you remove the dirt easily on your car. It's the same story when you try to brew your coffee. Here is a mocha pot. You can tell it from this safety valve. Engineer put rubber on the test inside of the pot to seal it. When you hit the mocha pot, not only the temperature will rise, the pressure inside the chamber will also rise, which will help extract more flavor from the coffee bean. Now it's time to every coffee lover's dream machine, espresso machine. The new concept for this machine is the pressure inside an espresso machine can be controlled. You can tell it from this pressure meter. According to coffee experts research, 9 bar is the perfect pressure to brew your coffee. One bar, usually one bar is uh, the normal atmospheric pressure. Nine bar means nine times the normal pressure. Engineer install temperature sensor and the pressure sensor by using closed loop control method. They can maintain 200 Fahrenheit and nine bar inside your espresso machine. Now you have perfect temperature and perfect pressure. It's time to make a cup of perfect coffee. To end today's lecture, 
I have one question for you: Why coffee in a tea bag is not so popular? They do exist, just not so popular. Can you explain this phenomenon from an engineer's perspective? Thank you. Although I have a coffee maker, I don't use it very often. I like to serve myself cowboy coffee just because I find this method is simple and pure. You only need to add some grinded coffee. Into a coffee mug. Add some hot water. Let the coffee grains drop off. Then you get a perfect cup of. Cowboy coffee. Enjoy.